the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Please pay attention. I told you there will be impartations all through, all through, all through, even while the word of God is coming. When I saw the visitation God gave me in the secret place, I knew he was up to something today. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, listen, and with Power. and then the Bible says with that Holy Ghost and power he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed he didn't just heal them with compassion listen 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 he didn't just heal them with desire he didn't just heal them with talk he healed them and did good because he was anointed you must be anointed for everything zeal is not enough results are at the mercy of the graces and the anointings that are at work in you our lives are defined listen to me brothers and sisters our possibilities in life are not defined by our backgrounds they are defined by the kinds and the dimensions of graces that are at work in us it is on the strength of this that men are different they are not different in their biological makeup. They are different on the strength of what they are hosting within them. This is what creates a response. Your environment does not respond to you physically. Your environment has never been disobedient. What is on you controls the extent of the response of the things around you. How God look at the extent to which jesus was anointed and the bible says he went doing good the measure of good he did was proportionate to the grace that was at work in him you don't do good just by desire please listen while i was leaving home to come here my heart was so heavy because there are thousands of people gathered and thousands others from different parts of the world following and now i'm wondering these people have challenges listen these people have mountains i got a text i think there's someone here is it a five-year-old child or something with cancer right here in this place tonight five years that's the woman right you are the woman no no it's not a word of knowledge just sit down they sent me a text look at that woman no matter what you sing and preach that woman has brought a child five year old with cancer what did the child do the child does not even have an opportunity to say anything the bible says that good that this woman wants cannot be done just with zeal and desire listen to me that good because there is a spirit sitting on that family and that baby it takes more than nice talk to set them free I will never be a man of God who will be a noise maker. The problems of people are more than noise. People need results in their lives. Look at that woman. Left Adamawa. Because she came for an encounter right here. And her father who had an accident was walking. Brothers and sisters hear me I repeat. Your possibilities are limited only. Only. The little walk with God and my walk in the spirit I have come to the conclusion that your limitations are never a limitation caused by mountains they are limitations based on the 
extent of grace the kind and the dimension of grace at work in your life is what defines everything literally everything from favor to breakthrough to healing to speed regardless of what the problem is believe me when i tell you there is a dimension of grace that can solve it so our challenge is not to discuss obstacles our challenge is to contend to dimensions where every obstacle that is prevalent to man is under the jurisdiction of the grace we carry at that point you become a blessing when you love god and you love people you will stay in the secret place till you become anointed because that's the only thing you have to give people you can give people stories after this meeting now you will forget everything i've said just like you forgot what i told you during the miracle service the only thing you remembered were the prophecies i told you and the miracles you had as powerful as the teaching was last miracle service you frankly cannot remember it entered your spirit but it's hardly in your mind but you remember the pain you came with you remember the hunger you came with now we don't live and serve god just for miracles but brothers and sisters my simple teaching tonight and this is what the lord put in my spirit to share with us that miracles you receive listen listen this is you have to get this tonight the way you maximize miracles is not by experiencing them alone you must discern what those miracles mean because miracles are a code they are a language the voice of god is upon every miracle that he performs he is speaking something and it's important you understand what god is saying are we together now the miraculous every manifestation of the spirit of god signs wonders healings breakthrough prosperity favor open doors whatever they are you have not maximized a miracle if all you live is with the experience of it you must discern the voice of god upon that miracle and the language that he through that miracle is speaking to you that's how we are blessed by miracles every miracle is a language just like laughter just like tears these are different languages in the realm of the spirit and tonight God is using the miraculous to say three things to us number one I will say it exactly as the Lord asked me to say it mm. number one the first language that miracles signs and wonders healings speak is the language of God but the first thing God is saying through miracles is I am not the author of sin sickness and pain that's the first language of God that miracles reveal the moment you experience a miracle in your life it's a language God is saying through it that I am not the author of sin I am not the author of sickness and I am not the author of pain. John 10 10 says, The thief cometh not. In other words, you never find him around except to do this to steal, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus made clear his manifesto. He said, But I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. So when you experience a miracle, in that miracle god is speaking and what he's saying number one is that by this miracle let it be confirmed to you that i'm not the author of sin i'm not the author of sickness please listen you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe god is the cause of sicknesses you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe god is the source of pain god through a miracle is speaking a language my son my daughter you came with a door that is closed now i have opened that door it's a message to you that i am not the author of sin of sickness and of pain two scriptures quickly mark chapter 1 please give us 38 to 45 very interesting reading 
Mark chapter 1 I just want to put this foundation and speak the things that the Lord has asked me to speak to us through his word and then we'll pray there are already miracles happening already miracles are happening Mark chapter 1 38 we are reading down to 45 listen it says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for there came I forth 39 and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils did you see that next verse please and there came a leper beseeching him and kneeling down to him just like many of you have come to find out Lord is this how my life will end or do you have another plan here's his reply to you he's saying he kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou will thou can make me clean in other words I know you have the ability I just need to verify your willingness and this is what Jesus says 41 and Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him read on I will be thou clean I will be thou clean when you read from verse 45 down to 45 you will see that the man was healed so miracles are languages this is what Jesus is saying through the miracle I will I will you know that I am but it's important for you to know that I will do it you know I can make you blessed but it's another thing for you to believe I will do it the Bible says what things soever thou, des thou desire he said when thou prayest believest that thou receivest it and thou shall have it miracles are a language James 1 17 James 1 17 I tell you the presence of God is so strong I'm just seeing a fog outside I'm not even seeing people that's all I'm seeing like a fog thick fog all the overflows that's what I'm seeing outside and I believe that that glory is doing something in people no matter where you are whether you are sitting in the gutter on the fence on a tree wherever it truly does not matter now I know that it's difficult to believe that because you're outside you think you are not seeing me directly it's not necessary James 1 17 everyone please read one to read every good gift uh-huh and every perfect gift is from above can mean anywhere so God clarifies coming down from who because there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so God says no so so you are not confused that I just said above it comes down from the father of light in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning he won't say this today and do this tomorrow so every miracle you will receive some of you have already received is a language you must not only experience it but you must discern the language God is saying look my son my daughter this dear family no matter how much you have cried and all of that he's telling you number one that know this because there are many of us here who are angry at God right now God you are the cause of my problems God you are the one who has not done this and that God is saying to tell you through the miracle that you will receive that he's not the author of pain he's not the author of the closed door say amen the second language that miracles speak the language of God spoken through miracles number two that I am a loving compassionate and merciful God the second language of God as revealed through miracles is that I am a loving comma compassionate and merciful God Matthew 35 verse 36 the love of God is a revelation that we must have listen 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 
the little time i have walked with god i have been amazed i know that preachers have preached about the love of god i have also read about it but i am amazed at the love of god for me my revelation of the love of god only climaxes at the substitutionary work of christ but there are things god has done here and now in my life that makes me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that god loves me and I, i'm not just speaking about general things oh you are breathing you are standing you are not in the mortuary all those things are general things that don't give personal revelations i have seen god arise to do things in my life that i i, I sit back sometimes and i fight tears the love of god is a revelation that sponsors the release of power the love of god his compassion compassion is an adjective that qualifies love it, it attempts to add emotions to love when you add emotions to love it becomes compassion the expression of it revealed many times in scripture you see the lord moved with compassion matthew 30 35 verse 36 okay we can't have it projected matthew 35 36 sorry let me just open it here so that we'll hurry up Oh, I think that's a mistake. I said 35. Forgive me. Let's go to First John. First John 4 19. I think I skipped scripture. I made a mistake there. Pardon me. It was a revelation of the compassion of Jesus. First John 4. Are we there? 19. Please let's read. Let's hurry up because of time. One to read, everybody. We love him because he did what who first loved us the bible says god had commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners right in due season christ died for us we love him because so what we are giving to him as love is only a reflection of his benevolence how that he gave it to us psalms 145 i found a very interesting scripture you'd want to listen to psalm 145 8 and 9 psalms 145 8 and 9 are we there psalms it says the Lord is gracious and full of what? Say it after me, full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He says slow to anger. The word there is patience. The New Testament calls it long suffering. Slow to anger and of great mercy. In fact, NIV says rich in love. Rich in love. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Verse 9. The Lord is good to how many? The Lord is good to, he says, and his tender mercies are over all his works. So the condition to qualify for God's mercy is that you are created by him. The moment you are God's creation, you qualify. Powerful revelation. So regardless of what the cause of the sickness, regardless of what the cause of the challenge is, are we together now? Whether it was your fault, whether it was carelessness, it was a mistake, regardless of what it is, the Bible says in God's economy, there is a system where his mercy can work. You are good and your mercy is forever. 
mercy because there are people here the challenges that you are facing right now in your life there are some of us the challenges are self-inflicted it, it, it was it was certain carelessness that gave room to demons they advise you not to sell the house you were looking for money immediately you sold the house and now you are houseless are we together that's carelessness but the mercy of God are we together you know sometimes we feel so bad and we feel can God show me mercy and rewind the hands of time and bring me out again the mercy of God was expressed in the parable of the prodigal son the Bible says the boy looked he was eating with pigs and says come the Bible said he came to himself and said how many hired servants have enough to eat in my father's house and I am here you know paraphrasing eating with pigs he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not even worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the Bible says while he was afar off the moment the father saw him he ran to him put the signet ring he didn't even say stupid boy you are finally back never discussed as as far as is recorded in scripture never discussed the only thing the father said is my son was once was lost but now he's found i prophesy to someone here those who are concluding against you because the challenges in your life were caused by you you know it was your fault there is still a bailout system in God's economy. It's called the mercy of God. Tonight may that mercy reach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are a revelation by God that he can give men a second chance again. God does not just have a second chance. As many chances as your sincerity can receive. The Bible says he's slow to anger. Slow to anger. The distance between where he is and his judgment, he slowed it down to give you room to tap into his mercy. There is no mercy in the realm of the spirit. Mercy is only in this realm. That's why you cannot pray for Satan to repent. Mercy is only a function of time and only those who walk with time can experience his mercy. So he tied mercy to the morning. He says your mercies are new every morning. Every 24 hours is renewed again. Ah, so that he showed you yesterday does not mean he cannot show you tomorrow. God is a merciful God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are families that are probably damaged here because of carelessness there are many families that are in financial bankruptcy they didn't listen when they would have listened there are many things we are humans is saying is, is a popular saying it says to air is human is that true all kinds of self-inflicted things but tonight there is a system in God I know you have even concluded yourself but there is a system after Samson's hair was taken away and they were using him to mock God in the temple they thought they plucked his eyes and the hair would never grow back again and Samson lifted up his voice to the God who was full of compassion and all of a sudden his strength returned and the Bible says he killed more people in his death I'm speaking to someone here they have not seen speed yet till you experience the mercy of God I know that for weeks now you've not been yourself but God is about to show you mercy and when he shows you mercy listen with mercy comes restoration naturally it's a sequence that follows don't sit down meditating on what you did wrong what you did right there is a provision for the mercy of God that's the language of a miracle so if when you were living in the world you got yourself involved with all kinds of things and then you had HIV now you are born again and you love God does God have to leave you like that to die no sir no sir no sir 
every time sin was cured sickness followed if God has forgiven you your sin that is spiritual he should be able to heal HIV do you know there are too many people who believe things are not working in their life because of certain things that have happened it's a different thing if you're a rebel and your heart is not broken and contrite because the mercy of God only follows and, and is applicable to those who have a broken and a contrite heart rebels never experience the mercy of God so when your heart is broken and contrite you're about to receive something that will change you hallelujah I was supposed to go for the job interview but I stayed overnight playing games and I slept I woke up by 10 the interview was over I've missed the job now the mercy of God can still speak for you I told you mercy comes with restoration if you were supposed to be employed three years ago even if they employ you now it's not restoration it's just advancement God must find a way of bringing the balance of three years so that when they check the graph of your life they don't see where the lag was that's restoration restoration is not progress restoration is an is an acceleration to catch up with where you would have been had the obstacle not come let's hurry up number three the third language that miracles speak signs and wonders now this is very important the third thing God is speaking tonight and always through miracles is I desire that you trust me enough to follow me wholly when God brings miracles he reveals his sovereignty not just his love so he tells you that I am a God of love and compassion but I am also mighty I calm the sea I calm your life I am worthy of your trust I am worthy of your handing over your entire life to me listen I am convinced that any man who is afraid of handing over the management of his life now listen it's a very different ball game to be born again and it's another ball game entirely to hand over the management of your life to God there are many people who are born again you are praying in tongues but you have not handed over the management of your life to God come and learn of me he says take upon me he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light when it is killing you it's not of God hallelujah is God dependable enough for you to suck to hand over your whole marriage to him is God dependable enough for you to hand over your finances to him and his ways is God dependable enough for you to hand over your life with him do you know when you see people carry talisman carry charm carry arrow and all these things they move around with to aid protection do you know what they are saying even that act of stupidity is also a language God I don't trust you enough to depend on you mm. Esther said if I perish I perish so when you see the sovereignty of God quarter to shame he steps in for you is a language he's saying I am that mighty and as a result hand over everything you know my concept of born again is not that you recited um, the Lord's prayer salvation prayer reciting salvation prayer for me is not born again enough you are born again when I look at your life experientially and I see the influence of the government of the kingdom in every aspect of your life you give God academics and leave finances you are not born again you are a rebel in that area do you know Satan only attacks the area that is not covered by the kingdom of God he cannot attack an area that is covered by the kingdom of God because you are numb to it your job is to apply the principles of the kingdom and leave God with the responsibility of manifesting his word our fears our insecurities make us to come out of alignment so when Jesus came his message was repent go back you've trusted God concerning every other thing when you thought the carryover will come 
you saw it change now for job you are trying to maneuver your ways there is somebody somewhere and you keep disturbing him hundred missed calls his foolishness is a sign that you do not depend on God tonight I'm encouraging you by the miracles that God will do in this place he's speaking to you and saying can you not see that my life your life is safer with me than it is with you are we together protection people are afraid of dying listen the world is so vulnerable you don't have to be outside to die people have sat down inside about to take the first spoon of food and they collapsed and died mysteriously there are arrows that fly by day you can only rebuke the ones you know what of the ones you don't know the safest place to be is under the bible says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high it says shall abide under the shadow of his wings like a hen covers the children a hen may, you can slaughter chicken but not when children are under it you can catch it when it's roaming around but when a real responsible hen has the children under it you come near there you lose your eyes for it have you seen a chicken that violent yeah so God is a merciful God to you but wait and see what he is to those who want to trouble you that's why the psalmist said how he said many are they that trouble me many are they that says where is your help he said but thou O Lord you are a what shield first God will shield you so that you calm down and then now turn and deal with anybody who is cursing him in your life that's what will happen to somebody I'm not motivating you believe me if you believe in God and you believe in miracles most people who believe in miracles have not settled down to discern what they mean so all of a sudden if in a few minutes now the pain suddenly disappears you don't just go back saying wow this this koinonia is powerful no you have experienced the miracle but you are not blessed by it because you have not discerned the language that comes from it if god suddenly by tomorrow someone calls you and gives you a land opens up a door for you untold wealth within one week if you just get excited and say finally i am rich you have experienced the miracle but you have not discerned it you must know that god is speaking there and saying it is my might that one is not love you are seeing that one is my might i can compress time and bring your desire of one year to one week can you depend on me that's why you see most people pastor jakes don't discern miracles that's why they keep receiving miracles and their spiritual life keeps going down because they are receiving miracles and not discerning from it i have learned from every dealing in, of god in my life a dimension of him like mike said it so powerfully there are names god wants you to know not the ones you've read in the bible he uses miracles to write his names upon your life so that by the time you are 30 years you are 40 years you have known certain names of god enough for you to build a foundation so that no nonsense will just come around and shake you if you have been born again for a while and you shake and fidget over everything there are some names of god you don't know are we together listen if by the grace of god let me just give you an analogy for many years we have been transporting people the bus services so you know by experience and by revelation that we are kind-hearted and we love you is that true now if on your way coming for koinonia sir somebody quickly rumors to you and says after service this night the way i've been feeling or oh, apostle told me or oh, i had a vision or oh, i had a dream that we are not going to use bus this night the experience you have had with me will make you to trivialize that nonsense so when satan speaks and you pay attention it's because there is something about god you don't know so he will look at you and say hey, you better just be laying hands on your stomach because barrenness for sure is your own you are seeing it with everybody and at first you say no it's not my portion and then every day your whole prayer time you are laying hands on your and say oh god no i can't be barren i can't be barren it's no longer prayer you are only spiritualizing unbelief that one is not prayer again Do you know there are many things we call prayer that is not prayer 
that you are using prayer language does not mean it's prayer it's simply a spiritual way of communicating unbelief that's why it doesn't get answered to you you are consoling yourself but when it rises up is you are not asking god for anything you think you are asking oh god are you not the one who said this in the realm of the spirit what you are saying is god mercy i'm afraid so the only thing you get back is is mercy not answer because you thought you were requesting but god is listening to the voice of your spirit you are you are ramp you are wrapping scriptures just to vent fear and god is saying if you trusted me you would have been quiet by now imagine that you are still praying for this chair to hold you by now pastor alpha and mike you are just moving and then later i tap us out and say are you stop praying let's pray Shabaladaba. lord in the name of jesus gravity is still working i i know this is that is that are you are you a, an intelligent physics student no that there is a level to which we understand but there is a level to which it's unbelief and somebody will now ask you and say what you need is not prayer what you need is revelation and an encounter an experience that makes this real so someone will say jump up and match it when you match it and it does not fall do you know sometimes god does not call, cause trouble but he gives you strength by exposing you to your fears and then you find out that they didn't do you anything you thought you will die but you are still standing and so you laugh at what made you cry yesterday that's how we grow in the spirit doctor's report said two weeks you are still five years and you've not taken panadol they said this hepatitis is is just at best oh if you reach 21 glory to god you are now 45 you were not thinking about it you have you reached 45 because you forgot about it now that you have started remembering you are wondering whether you reach 48 you will reach even 100 no see i have constructed my belief system such that believe me when i tell you there are some things that cannot enter my mind again if i pray with you you'll be very frustrated because while you are rapping and ranting requests and say oh god baba this and that and that there are certain things you know about god that gives you rest that's why i say come on to me you have been moving you are going on to anybody you are moving he said come on to me all ye that are weary what wearied you running around like a roaring lion that's the spirit of satan that makes people god he, listen listen is satan that moves around like a roaring lion god only moves his eyes not his body the bible said the eyes of the lord run it to and fro satan has to physically run up and down and you are down joining him so he said come on to me this running around has wearied you i will give you rest have you seen somebody rest? when you say rest in peace is a person moving around have you seen somebody dancing and you're about to bury him you are wicked you bury people who are quiet be still stillness stability in the spirit is a great sign of faith turn and prophesy to someone and say be still say you're running around will not bring you the, the problem the answer say it say be still your phone calls go say it your phone calls text messages and running around will not bring you the answer be still your lack of sleep continue will not bring you the answer discussing your problems with everybody will not bring you the answer beating your wife whether you are married or not say it say beating your husband too will not solve the problem harassing your children will not solve the problem committing suicide will take you to hell look do you know people who claim they don't have energy i'm surprised that they are wasting the remaining one doing useless things instead of them to go to the presence of god and die there and say lord this thing whether or not it is answered i'm already in trouble there's no other trouble to enter so let me stay in your presence and die there there is a way you put pressure on the integrity of god when he knows he's the last card truly in your life you'll be surprised to see what he will do many of us have options You must follow him. 
he said if you will not believe me believe me for the work's sake believe that i am my father and we are one there is a oneness in us i handed responsibility to my father and i submitted to his authority it gave me rest brothers and sisters any miracle that does not draw you closer to jesus listen even if that miracle was produced by the power of god if it does not draw you closer to jesus you have not really received the real miracle you have received the experience but you have not discerned it to make you grow i am surprised that the more people receive miracles they now run away from god when zacchaeus had a miracle he dropped down from the tree gave up his his um tax collecting work and immediately walked with jesus when peter saw the miracle of the fish he said go away from me i'm a sinner and jesus said no come 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 and sit down let's eat together miracles draw people you are a drunkard you don't spend one hour without taking a bottle of of gulda you have been sitting here for hours now the urge is not there that's a miracle the miracle is not so that immediately after koinonia you quickly go back and take one more before you sleep you have frustrated the grace of god you know let me tell you something by god's grace i believe in miracles but i also believe the message that miracles give we don't discern the languages we only gyrate in the experiences that's why satan corrupts when a native doctor gives you a miracle he, he attaches a message to it he says by this miracle know that this small thing this horn you are seeing is powerful and when you receive that miracle you will go back to the man again there is nobody who runs away from result when you receive results in an area you stay there if the result is consistent you camp there so that you visit god's presence receive a miracle and run away and only go back now that you have acknowledged that he's the only one who can produce the miracle stay there tell your neighbor stay with god please prophesy say stay with god there are people here as they are saying stay with god the holy ghost is speaking to you because i don't care whether you are born again or not the kingdom is not a priority to you you probably just came here because the sickness or the challenge or the bills or whatever is eating you up yes god will touch you but if all you get tonight is prophecy so that you can build a house you have not discerned it miracles genuine miracles produced by the spirit should draw men to god so when you see the favor it brings tears in your eyes and you say lord i will walk with you forever i've tried every other thing but i've settled with you say amen the last message that miracles produce there are many more but let me just stop here oh scripture for the third point john 10 30 to 38 just write it and you go and read it later our time is gone john 10 30 to 38 the next point what god is saying tonight and what he will say always with genuine miracles listen this is what he's saying my servant is my representative he represents my voice to you hear him the last message that miracles produce is that god is speaking to you that if i can come to you and prophesy to you if you can get healed if you can get blessed god is saying something he's saying the man you are seeing the ministry you are part of are a representation of my program on earth here and now so have the confidence to not just listen to me listen to them miracles are a language that demonstrate that the man speaking to you the one with whom God will use to produce the miracles I know people say in meetings we have not come to see any man we came to see Jesus that's true but listen to what father Abraham told Lazarus he said they have he said let somebody come you know return from the grave and he said no they have the law and the prophets they should listen to them in other words there are people that represent what the out-of-body experience would have given them listen to them a man who can tap from an unseen realm and bring an anointing to touch your life 
it will be stupid for you to believe that he's not at, in touch with God. So if he tells you Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you and you don't listen to that one, you have not discerned the miracle. Are we together now? If I come and stand on stage here and I'm just standing and you are falling and shouting and receiving an impartation, that is a message. It's not just, it's not about really about a man, but it's the fact that God is speaking and he has found a vessel he's speaking with. So you listen to the man speak as though you are listening to God. Forget about the imperfections that will come. You are not alone. The Holy Ghost is there to see through it. What if I listen to everything and I fail? No. How did they write the Bible? How did they write the Bible? All kinds of people wrote the Bible. Temperous people. Bad people. But in the midst of it, the purposes of God were still preserved. Holy men wrote, regardless of their imperfections. Let me tell you, there is a degree to which no matter how much flesh you have, God will veto it to make sure certain things will pass to his people with the level of purity that they need. Whether it is intellectual limitation, hear me. Whether it is spiritual limitation, that is why a donkey can talk. Do you know what it takes for a donkey to learn English? When men of God pray for utterance, utterance is not oratory. Utterance is the ability of the Holy Spirit to superimpose your flesh and grant that your communication be full of light, that it be accurate and with minimal, if any, corruption as it gets into the heart of the receptors. That's utterance. Utterance is not the ability to speak English. That's oratory. Utterance is a spiritual thing. The capacity to communicate realities such that regardless the spiritual level of the listeners, they will receive. That one, you have to pray for it. You go to school to get oratory, but you stay with the spirit to get utterance. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 the Bible talks about the man Jesus he said he was approved Hebrews 2 verse 4 can you give it to us quickly God also bearing witness he talked about the man Jesus and how that he appeared unto certain people and those people now haven't commissioned them to go and represent him the Bible says God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will so God confirmed their word you may doubt their English but you may not doubt the result the same way some of you will not doubt what you are about to experience you know I watch people receive miracles and sometimes I know even them they don't agree have you seen somebody falling under the anointing and he's shocked as he's going down what's happening to me but he's still going down anyway that's the same way your life will change you will sit down and not know what is happening to you. You will just walk out of this place and my God, like the chains of Peter fell, you will see chains just fall and leave you. It says God bearing them witness. So what are miracles? Instruments of witness. God validates the fact that this person is my servant. Listen to him. He has been approved like you have NAVDAC registration number on water. Now, there are those who produce water at the back of their house and don't have NAVDAC registration number. When they catch them, you find them. Whether they are sincere or not, they were not approved. We're about to pray. Isaiah 44, verse 25 and 26. Two scriptures, and then we'll begin to pray. That staring is happening again. Isaiah 44, 25 to 26. Listen, talking about God now. The God that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it divine as mad. The Bible says he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish. Listen to what he does, 26. That's what he does to them, but this is what he does to his servant. That confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers. What is the confirmation of the word? You are blessed. If it happens, it's a confirmation. What is performing the counsel? Be healed. And immediately you are healed. 
that's a performance that's creation like a woman is in her, her father is in Adamawa and she's here in Zaria and a word comes and all of a sudden she goes back and the man who had an accident now is walking he performed the counsel so if there is no proof in your life among the many variables you have to check is whether you are approved they no 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 you can be a servant of God but not yet be approved being called does not ever mean being approved approved means you have been released to begin to dispense the realities of the kingdom many people think the opposite of being approved is being fake no the opposite of being approved is being real but unapproved there are many unapproved genuine servants of God unapproved genuine servants of God in ministry for many years as Isaiah he was prophesying but he was not approved 6 verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah saw the Lord a call was taken and given to him is that true he said here am I send me God didn't say I'm already sending you that was when his ministry started you can be doing a lot of things the opposite of being approved get this the opposite of being approved is not being fake fake is in another category you can be real yet not accredited like you are a student but you don't have a certificate yet you are in school you are intelligent you may even be on IT you may even be doing projects but it doesn't make you a graduate there is a certificate do you have it many people just stand and say the bible says this sign shall follow i am a believer be healed we keep mocking ourselves with nonsense because when you read the bible intellectually you will get not head sophia human wisdom you must read it of the spirit tarry in jerusalem he had told them many times do you know before he said tarry ye he had sent them one time he said go two by two what happened to the power that is now saying tarry until ye be endued what happened to the power that they came back blind i saw he gave them his name they were not yet approved they only went in his name that's why i said don't rejoice that miracles you didn't do anything there if i tell you the dynamics of the result you didn't participate the most important thing is that you must be a part of this family your name's being written in heaven approved when you are approved it's like a register in the realm of the spirit so when god is paying approved servants you receive your share you are not receiving salary find out whether you are employed that's why the bible says those he called he glory he, um, those he predestined he called but he has not glorified them yet those he called after a season of building he now glorified them if a man will punch himself that man will be a vessel unto honor he can stop there as a vessel unto honor comma meat for the master's use believe me many approved singers not mistrels in the spirit they sing and twist their tongue and they think the secret is in minor songs Help, and you sing all kinds of minor songs you think the secret is in clashing cymbal because Joshua Simon is doing it. You harass every drummer to clash every cymbal. No, show me the certificate. Let no one trouble me, Paul says, for I bear. There is a badge. Demon said, Jesus, I know. We see his certificate. A man approved of God. Approved of God. Approved of God. Paul the apostle was approved of God let me tell you every true servant of God who has worked with God and has a dealing with God is approved and when he's approved immediately whether you are called into the ministry of helps there must be a sign from heaven when Jesus was born he was approved of God there was a sign a star arose on the day of Pentecost that experience was approved of God there was a sign every time there is approval there is there is a sign where is your own it could mean you are not even in the school completely or you can be in the kingdom and not be in the school of the spirit there are two different things like there are people in abu some are selling rice 
some are uh, some have some some are selling um things you are inside abu but you are not in any faculty so you can be in the kingdom but not in the school of the spirit only those in the school of the spirit access power and command the grace that will keep nations still i'd like you to pray one minute and say lord i'm in your school oh nothing is taking me out of there i'm not only in the kingdom i'm in the school of the spirit the place where men are made with power the place where men access the presence of god superior dimensions of spiritual reality pray in one minute thank you father for being in the kingdom i gave my heart to you and i'm there but lord i walk with you consciously in obedience he that endures to the end he shall be given a crown and a white stone there are rewards not everything in the kingdom is a gift brothers and sisters there are rewards that's why there are diversities of results if there are no rewards everything will be possible for everybody at the same time because the lord is rich unto all why are there disparity in results is disparities of trainings just like you have a professor you have a master's holder you have an undergraduate you have a secondary school certificate holder different seasons that provide different accesses to graces lift your voice and pray hallelujah second corinthians will rise up to begin to pray now god will do a quick walk second corinthians 12 verse 12 by this little teaching i I'd like you to desire more in god more in god greater grace a time will come your talk will weary people they'll be tired of you when you speak and there are results your words become heavy they look like the word of god second corinthians 12 12 paul was speaking about his credentials you used to know me as a scribe but i had an encounter i was in the wilderness of arabia for over 19 years he was in the kingdom but he was in the wilderness of arabia after 19 solid years of stringent building with the lord a testament came truly the signs of an apostle there are signs called the signs of an apostle the sign is not the name i am apostle jeffrey i am apostle joshua selman no i am pastor this i am reverend this the word apostle there does not does mean apostle like an office the sign of an approved and a sent one when Navdak approves approve something, no matter what the drink is, there is something they stamp there. No matter what it is, check somewhere. Even if there's no space, they create space and stamp it. It is based on this, brothers and sisters, that we can gather people like this by grace and say, come. This is not the issue of my personal faith. This is the issue of a Navdak number. Koinonia is registered. This is like you have jam center. There is jam center that is for crooks. When people go there, they don't even write exams. Is that true? You pay money, but there's what they call uh, what they call it approved centers. When you go there, you sit down. There are tables. They have gone through a, tra a training by the grace of God, by the election of grace, and by our determination to take advantage of it. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all in what was the first thing the first sign is not miracles the patience to endure till you access it the first sign of an apostle a saint one is not signs and wonders many foolish people deceive themselves the first sign is patience for many years you will walk with god and not see one result the first sign is patience you will prophesy nothing will happen you will pray for the sick nothing will happen but you are still in the school so patience then in signs notice the progression signs trickles then it now moves to the next realm wonders 
then the apex of your apostolic ministry is called mighty works that one is not personal miracle that is territories elijah stands and said there shall be no rain look at the progressions these four levels if you don't enter this level in ministry you will never be fulfilled there are people this where they are patience 10 years they will not move others signs here and there somebody is testifying you you are let me tell you how you know it's a sign you are not even sure whether it came from you they just say pastor prayed for me and sincerely you cannot tell when there is no predictability a sign shows direction that's not it if you see a sign to abu that sign is not abu it's pointing you there wonders a realm of predictable results you begin to see certain things and then before you reach the apex he called it mighty works the only other person that title was used for was jesus he said what wisdom is this that such mighty works were wrought this is where we are going where you shift systems so don't just say i'm born again i will enter here you are joking it's the same way saying i have admission i'm a first class student they gave you admission you walk your way to first class the options are there he gave unto one five two one according to their several ability not his desire for them several things will be happening tonight brothers and sisters i want you to trust three things tonight as we pray one listen 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 number one believe in your faith in god and god's faith in you two listen believe in the covenant that we have with god i told you that our work with god is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant there are covenants that men have with god let me tell you listen i can take one bottle of beer here and come up and minister i will minister by the covenant my relationship with god is something he will deal with me with later on but as far as the covenant of using my life my grace and koinonia to minister not even me can stop it that's why when elijah died the covenant was still on his bones elisha his bones still raised the dead because the grace on him was authorized to do that not whether he was living or dead that's the basis of man to transfer that's the correct basis of man to transfer that when you touch a man or shake a man you are going not with a material you are carrying a covenant to your home god stops dealing with you now based on you it is on that basis we can say the god of this when you say the god of isaac there's something about god and isaac that makes him hear you the god of jacob there's another thing i don't encourage people to say the god of joshua selman and this but brothers and sisters there are covenants there are men god entered a covenant with them like joshua no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life he didn't say where you do well that's the covenant this house you see is a mystery of covenants covenants here and there that's the reason why we make certain bold claims I truly believe that if all I use is just my personal faith I will be afraid I have eyes I'm a human being you can see cases that you know are impossible but there are higher dimensions rise up on your feet let's pray I've convinced you enough to believe that you can walk out of here free please lift your voice and in one minute blast in tongues pray in the spirit Lord I believe that by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie are you praying for surely the signs of an apostle were what were wrought in patience and signs and wonders and mighty works listen 
in one minute please young old just walk with this instruction mention clearly the issue of concern and say father visit it don't just say god bless me that's not a very wise statement be very exact he said give us this day lift your voice and pray in one minute please pray passionately Emmanuel, we want to see you pray. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, we want to see you. We want to hear from you. broken burdens are about to be lifted families are about to rise pray Emmanuel Emmanuel we want to see hello Madonna such grace in this place such grace listen listen there are spirits you've heard me say it that tie down men there are spirits that tie down destinies there are spirits that tie down families and are responsible for the predicament of people when you come into the presence of God like this, some of you are lovely, innocent people. You love God with all your heart. But certain things are not going well with your life. Those spirits must give way. There is an anointing. Don't be afraid. Don't ask whether it will happen. It's not just your personal faith. You have believed God. That's all right. Leave the rest to Him. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My secret place is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you. I pray. ready let's go lift your hands I want to pray for you that every spirit and every force my God I see so many people so many people who will be delivered so many people who will be delivered I want you to bring them out the anointing is here it has come lift your voice at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus inside and outside I come against every spell every enchantment by the power that is in the name of Jesus that as God's people shout in the name that is above all names let every dagon crumble 
Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three. Take it, take it, take it, take it. My God. Charms, charms, charms. I'm seeing charms. I'm hearing in my spirit charms. Bring them out. Charms, charms, divination, instruments of wickedness. Divination, I curse you. Katokata, outside. The angel of his presence, outside, sweeping like rain. That view. Divination, instruments of wickedness. I command you to leave. I command you to leave. This is a place of his power. Lift your hands, my God, my God, my God. Listen, I'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit. This thing that they count. There's this thing that they count one by one. In the name of Jesus, that's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is telling me that there are instruments of divination. People are about to be set free now. Lord, I don't know where they are, but like fire is visiting at least 21 people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, let it go. I release that fire now. Help them right now. Right now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, no devil will stand it. I assure you, no devil will stand it. Whether you are inside or outside, there is grace to set you free. I command divination. I command yokes. Broken. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Lift your hands and pray. I'm seeing a number in the spirit 74, and the Lord is telling me that's a number of people that must be delivered from the spirit of delay. Lift your voice. This delay is a wicked spirit. I want to pray. You may not know you belong to that category. Is the anointing that will fish you out. Guys, be sensitive, please, please. In the name of Jesus, 74 people, Lord, wherever they are, I stretch my hands right now. The spirit of delay at the count of three. I'd like you to shout, Jesus, one, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. The cause of delay. The spell of delay. So take it, 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 Delay. Hallelujah. Those outside, only those outside, lift your hands. The Lord is directing me. Those outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. First overflow, second overflow, and online. There are certain people that will be picked by angels. Strong delay spirit outside. In the name of Jesus, are you ready? Just those outside. One, two, three. I command that spirit. There's fire outside. It must go now. Leave our destiny. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. F A I T H. Faith. Who is faith? I'm hearing a name, faith. Are you faith? Hold on, hold on. Don't match the people here, please. Faith. This person is outside. It's a small girl. She's wearing a white something. White like white. Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? This is the girl I saw in the spirit. I'll pray for you. Come. What's your name? Faith. Your name is Faith. Come. Where are you from? Let's hurry up. Please, if I mention your case, I don't have to mention every case. Don't worry. 
our time is constrained we wanted to make it a vigil but we are off to lagos tomorrow just faith let them come are you an usher usher lift your hands you are the first person to receive the miracle that i'm praying for i'm looking at you and i'm not seeing an usher god is saying he's visiting your family right now receive that grace now right now let that devil leave our family go delay out of our family after that you can do your ushering work look at me my dear where are your parents huh where is home where do you stay you are faith too huh let me pray for you hold my hands it's not just you i'm praying for look at me i want to pray for your family your family is being greatly oppressed huh go and tell your parents that a man of god pray for them i'm seeing a family that came from abuja that's what the lord is showing me abuja not just a person like a family that came from abuja father in the name of jesus let there be a miracle supernatural miracle miracle all of you your names are fake hold on please hold your hands together um so that we can save time we still have sick people to pray for we are going to be very fast it won't take long i want us to finish very fast tonight all the faiths i'm going to pray your name is faith too usha you are not sure you're a worker you will receive your own differently lift your hands the lord is saying i should tell you he's giving you beauty 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 in the name of jesus beauty all the faiths i'll just lay hands on one person as a point of contact to you father i don't know why they are out but may the anointing flow from this one lady right now to every one of them right now right to all of you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ so that we will save time by the power of the holy spirit i see a family from abuja where are you please let me speak to you from abuja clap for jesus as they come quickly please hold on who is sick who is sick who is sick chest. your chest has a problem yes you sleep in the night yes. and you feel as if there's something on it yes this is witchcraft yes but someone else is sick i'm saying where are you from abuja all of abuja. you yes. hold on yes all of you yes i didn't say if you are from abuja please you are a family from abuja hold on hold on if they are here don't push them let's be gentle on them why is he there okay no you don't have to those under the anointing listen listen when people are under the anointing especially for deliverance there's a reason why they are out don't just lift them and push them you can shift them there's a reason why we ask them to come out it's not to show they are falling you already saw them fall there you are the one from abuja lay your yes. hands come let me lay my hands on you you are scattered you are all the same family all of you the ones at the back are you the same family you are on your own you would have sat down there my brother my sister two of you you are together i will pray for you what do you want god to do for you please we don't have time if you are not sure i'll just keep you aside so that we can deal with it. i need employment employment yes, sir. I need a job. do you love yeah, god yes sir huh? yes sir seriously yes sir what of you i want to follow my education sir see it's not everybody i'm just speak on behalf of your family we don't have all the time I have to pray for you, my brother. Huh? God will heal you. And then for you. What's wrong? He has diabetes. That, I said there's somebody sick. He's you heard me say there's somebody sick. He's, one sick. he's having chest pain, but this one. Leave chest pain. Chest pain is not. This, this one is witchcraft. It's not sickness. This. Okay. We have to pray. Huh? I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these things that doctors used to check organs of people. I'm seeing that he has a wound. He has a wound inside. And the wound is not healing. We have to pray. Father, heal that in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I'll just lay my hands on you very quickly. My major focus is to pray for the sick. That breakthrough, we can prophesy that one. But I, I want to pray for the sick. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, my brother your chest you go and get a job in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus god bless you it's done go back to your seat please come quickly let me pray for you it's done i pray for you 
Why are you here? Huh? God should what? Set me loose from Set you loose. Distraction. You are distracted. One, two, you are very disorganized. Look at me. Your major problem is not demonic. You are very scattered and disorganized. You need your life to get some level of order. Lift your hands. And you, you want to do ministry. You, you don't need, you, you heard me say approved, right? You settle down. You don't just run around. If you are disorganized, you will not get results. Father, grant him grace. Supernatural grace. Something is leaving you and something else is coming into you. That thing that must leave you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I release an anointing upon you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Why are they here, your children? Come. What's, are they sick? What's wrong with them? This one has a heart problem. Heart problem? Yes. Oh my God. And this one has breathing. Breathing problem. They are all your children. They are, children. They are all your children. Hold them. It's you I should pray for, not them. The, the children are just reacting to something. I have to pray for you. Eh? Things are not going on well. Where's your husband? He's abroad. He's abroad. How long has he been there? Getting to you. What I want to tell you, eh, is not something I will say in the open. Are you hearing me? But uh, I pray for the grace of God. That's that's all I will say for now. Eh? And I'll pray for you because you see, any success. No, let hold my hands. Let's pray. Why are you holding our hands? You are a sister. I'll pray for you. Huh? You want to marry and what again? Are you married? Uh -huh. Marriage is one. What's the second prayer point? Job. What's the third one? Financial breakthrough. These are the three things I brought you here. There's one more. There are four. Ministry. Ministry. So there are four. I'm seeing it like that. That's why I'm telling you. Did you show me? Did you tell me? That's what I'm telling you. Marriage is number one. Then job, finance, and then you have the call of God. You're a woman of prayer and God shows you dreams. Is that true? Where's the mic? Yes, sir. God shows you dreams yes, and you are wondering you don't know whether you should wait for your husband or start ministry now because that's your fear you see the anointing is on her that's your fear you don't know whether you should start something now or you should wait for the man God will send into your life and it's because you're a nice lady you don't want to do anything that looks antagonistic to his ministry this is I'm hearing you discuss with a friend huh and that's so God is going to solve that problem for you but you let's pray hold my hands father what God has joined together, the Bible says, let no man, whether whoever, man also includes woman. Man doesn't just mean a male figure. Man includes man plus every Jezebel that represents a system. And I'm using, I'm not saying your husband, are you getting me now? This is not something I'll say here. I want to prophesy. Any marriage, any couple that are married now, and there's anybody looming around to reap where you did not sow in the name of Jesus we scatter that nonsense right now you will hear testimonies from this thing I just this little prayer has delivered somebody right now father let there be miracles the spirit of infirmity I command it to live your life now in the name of Jesus bring the children please Where's the one with the heart problem? Uh, okay, look at this adorable baby. Heart problem. Heart. What did they tell you? He said there is a swelling. A swelling in his heart. Hold it for me. It must go down. Because this baby now will not grow well. How many of you know that the baby will not grow well? You may not know what is wrong until he grows. Then certain things that should happen to other people will not happen to him i know a lady that i prayed for she doesn't have a womb i'm not saying it's not developed completely no womb like that usually it's these kinds of things um you know at the point of conception several things happen jesus in the name that is above all names i pray in the presence of your people this is why you sent me by the power of the Holy Spirit, let this heart become normal now. You see, you see what is happening? I told you it's the mother that should be prayed for. I'm praying for him. 
and see the person falling under the anointing because that's where it came from it returns to hell now I can't hold this one it's big in the name of Jesus supernatural miracle see the anointing is on her too somebody come and hold her please hold her hold her God is healing the baby and healing her too two of them hold her the anointing is on her God has removed something from your family related to this there's something you would have suffered that is related to this thing you are an usher while you held him that's why the anointing touched him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I want to prophesy on two people they will come under the anointing now please bring them out just two people right here indoors there's an anointing that is coming on two people right now thank you Jesus the, the Lord is just giving a word we're going to pray for the sick now two people you can't stand it it's like fire to come on you please bring them August is it Augusta Augusta August Augusta or August something that looks August something a name Augusta or Augustina or something like that please anybody with that name Augustine sir this man come this this fair man come your breakthrough has come there's a lady outside that August something you are outside in the overflow there is another one you are wearing chain chain like uh, this thing they wear is there someone like that not you sir you there's somebody you're wearing I want to pray uh, ah. look at you lift your hands look at me shout I avoid trouble shout it I avoid trouble you are speaking English shout it I avoid troubles because I'm seeing the devil planning to really frustrate you December and we have to pray against it and this is something that is is something you are vulnerable to but in the name of Jesus no trouble by the power of the Holy Spirit no trouble in the name of Jesus you don't stop them you just guide them in the name of Jesus sir I want to pray for you God is about to change your life you are a man look at me sir two things will happen to you I say it in the open you will come and stand here look at me one look at me sir a level of financial breakthrough you have never seen in your amen. life amen amen is what is going to come amen. upon you amen i want you to believe it sir it's not just because maybe uh, i'm talking to you because all of that that's number one number two is that i want to pray for you i'm seeing a thermometer rising up and down your chest this is bp yes, sir. huh yes sir. you have bp yes sir. did you tell me no, sir. i have to pray on it if i don't pray on it you're going to have serious problem because I'm seeing you go to a doctor maybe now or in the future and the doctor is specifically telling you not to eat salt oh, yes, salt like completely I don't know what but I think something that has not to do salt so I have to pray for you I'm going to pray for you and any other thing you came here with hold my hands sir, with both of your hands I want you to believe father there is a grace for prosperity receive that grace in the name of Jesus is there is an anointing that makes men prosper look at me sir in the name of Jesus I release that grace God gave it to me I pray for you again in the name of Jesus that mantle and unction that can cause a man to prosper may it come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you sir and BP come sir let the BP be healed now in the name of Jesus Huh? what's your name what's his name Augustine Augustine Augusta. Augusta thank you come you are the one who needs deliverance I'm going to pray for you but lift your hands I'm looking at you and I'm seeing uh, now this is not death but I'm seeing you know how a place has been deserted like a wilderness that's what I'm seeing as I'm looking at you and I have to pray for you because if I don't pray for you, are you married? Huh? No, if I don't pray for you, number one, you will not get any reasonable man to marry you. It's all these foolish men who will loiter around and come and not be serious. Huh? In the name of Jesus, for you and your family, be set free right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I open up those doors. Jane! 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 
Jane, 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 you are a fair woman, looks like an evil lady. You are wearing it like a sleeveless. Jane, sleeveless, something like that. Who is that? Huh? I'm there. Look at she's surprised. You think I'm a herbalist? I've been talking to people. Why are you looking like um one? The first miracle is there's something in your stomach. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes. Did you tell me? Yes, something is biting you physically like a snake. It moves down to your breast region and comes down there every day. Yes, sir. That's the first thing God is going to do. Stand up. Number two. See, she doesn't want to stand up. Stand up, madam. Mm. Ah. Kai, you are a good woman, but you have suffered. I have to pray for you. Somebody came into your life and did something I cannot say in the open. You have been crying till now. You gave this man everything. Is that true? Yeah, right. Everything you gave this man, he rubbish your life into zero and went away. When I was preaching about mercy, God was talking to you. Yes, huh? Yes. Don't worry. The man even said you're a fool. God will use the foolish things and confound the wild. <laughs> Stand up. Three. That man that appears in your dream is going to leave you now. Stand up. Amen. This this wicked spirit. Stand up, my dear. Hold my hand. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, I love the power of God. That person lifting that picture. Lift it high. Right now. The power of God will touch you. Lift both of your hands. There's anointing coming on you right now. That's it. Your prayer is answered. It's done completely. The miracle for which you are lifting that picture for completely is gone may your life turn and change like day and night in the name of Jesus I close every door you have opened in your life and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Christ one two three four four months there is someone you're a businessman you've not done anything for four months it's like you are, I don't know if it's a project you are doing or you are supposed to do something. Four months, you have been completely grounded. I don't know if you are inside or outside. Please run. God wants to pray for you. Why are they here? Jane, I want to pray for you and then we'll pray for the sick. Jane. Madam, I finish with you. You can go back rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be breakthrough for you. Let there be breakthrough for you. If I pray for you, please go back. If I don't speak for you, uh, upon you, it just means I'm not hearing anything else. Jane, your name is Jane. You are the businessman. Lift your hands where you are. Just lift it there. Lift your hands where you are. I said keys were given to people earlier on. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands on you. And everyone who relates to this miracle too, may they receive it. I release an anointing upon you right now. Right now. Everyone who relates to this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, you need wisdom, you need strategy, and you need connection. These three things, these are the things you came for. I release upon you grace. Don't be confused. Things are about to turn around in your life. Come. You need a helper. Somebody helped you. You did not thank him. You didn't thank him and this thing has affected you. Doctor. Doctor. I'm seeing a doctor. I don't know if it's all this. Please come, sir. I want to speak to you, sir. Sorry, I'm having to call you. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. Go and write it down. This is what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Even me, I don't understand what I'm saying. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. It will bring three things. One, envy. Number two, I see your superiors angry with you. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And he's saying it is because this kind of speed is not common. Koinoni, I want you to witness this thing and write it. You will see it happen. Sir, I pray for you. 
Shade, you are a witness to what God is doing to your husband. God is going to give him such a dimension of speed. Sir, this will start from now till June 2017. You will see speed that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, do you know why you are stranded? Only one reason. You violated the law of honor. The law of honor. This is not just witchcraft. Don't, don't act as if you don't need people. You always need them for your business to rise. Huh? Why am I seeing piles of clothes? What do you do? I sell clothes. You sell clothes. Honor is what you have violated. Hold my hands. Let your business grow now. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. What is Abba? Go to Abba too. You go to Abba yes, sir. to buy clothes there. Yes, sir. But favor has closed there. Yes, sir. The person who used to help you, something happened between you and him. Yes, sir. You didn't honor him. He was very fair to you. Huh? Yes, Let me just tell you the truth. That's why I say it's the law of honor. Yes, sir. After I pray for you, he's yes. going to call you. Amen. The business will start again. Amen. Grace for you. I'm not revealing. I'm making it happen. This is not revelation. The word will make it happen. I place the word of God upon your life. And I declare that things will change. In Jesus name. Pray for one minute. I'm communicating to us a burden of the spirit. You must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about. Do you believe in divine health? Is it a reality to you? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? What has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe? Was it supposed to change? What has not changed about your life? Why has it not changed? Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today. And we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about. Because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray. What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here, yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it. Proximity is not the same as connectivity. That you are close to an anointing, that you are close to a revelation, does not mean it will become part of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe. We cannot stand in the public because... We are ashamed of the, the stigmatizations and the mockery, probably, or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives. That you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married. And that commitment, you are so ashamed of it. Is that true? To an extent that when you hear people talking, and they say, how about you? So who is for this weekend? You just laugh. And then you feel to say, no, 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 no. I, I, this is not my ideology. It is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come. Hallelujah. Every great man is fanatic about something. And if you must ever experience greatness, especially in the spirit... 
you must have something you are convinced about. And you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions. Very interesting scripture. The Bible says, can we have that scripture again? There is a way that what? Seems right. Seems right unto a man and appears straight. The road is not straight. <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing, it is a straight road. Hallelujah. Like a drunkard. When a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer, he can see this door right here. Is that true? Based on his perspective, the door is here. And he will go convincingly. Now, whether or not he's right will be shown shortly. Praise the Lord. He can see a gutter. And according to what his eyes is seeing, he's seen a staircase. Right? And he reaches to that gutter. And with every sense of conviction, he will attempt to climb. Only to find out that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry, how it should be. We have our ideas about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God, about rapture, about the coming of Christ, about Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work. There are those who believe that walking is an insult. Is that true? There are those who believe if you are not walking, you are not yet a man or a woman. You are still a child. We have all kinds of ideologies. But the Bible says there is what? A way. It seems right unto a man. But in the end, look at it. The dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong. You see why it is dangerous? Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you took a 10-hour journey or 12-hour journey to Lagos and you followed a wrong road. And after 12 hours, you meet a, a military man on the road. And he says, where are you really going? And he says, sir, the truth is Lagos. He says, ah, you are at the other side of this nation. So it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me, I, I remember then 
when I was in secondary school, you know, we wanted to make it so much. Every subject that we had to study, we took it very seriously. And um, I did fine arts. And one of the things that, that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives. Right? Perspectives. It was a very interesting subject for me. Because when we were being taught that um, lesson, we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing. Is that true? And they called it what? Perspectives. And so when we were given assignments, they will tell us from so, so, so perspective, draw this building. Praise the Lord. There were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective, they must be represented in your drawing. Is that true? And I enjoyed it so much. But then I got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone. But that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. Everyone say perspectives. That it matters your interpretation of life and everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from. Are you getting my point now? If we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside, we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside. Is that true? Based on what the artist is drawing. That was the information that his eyes could pick. He may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here. And then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it, my goodness, you would think Koinonia has been held in a stadium. Perspectives. So it is possible, please listen to me, that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life. Are you getting my point? And be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective. It's one of the biggest problems with the body of Christ. And so, a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase. Are you getting me? And a good life and a great life. And from his perspective, that is all there is to the Christian experience. Are you getting me? And then the Christians in places like Iraq and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood. It can cost you your life. This is their perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? And to them, it may not interest them so much when you are teaching. This guy here is teaching, I have come that you may have life. Is that true? And have life more abundantly. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be poor. Whereas another person, looking at the same truth from another perspective, begins to speak and say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If it will cost me my life, so be it. Yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective, he's seen that life is a serious warfare. Before you are born and until the day you get to heaven, there is a fight. And this is his perspective. Now the trouble starts, hear me, when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective. You see where error begins to come in. When we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body. Hallelujah. And so I'm here 
this is the perspective I've seen. And now I look at the person in Iraq and I say, this guy does not have faith. If he had faith, guns and bullets will not enter his body. Whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here. Are you getting me? I live in a house that is secured digitally. And these guys here are speaking and say, Lord, help these people not to be carnal. Let them not miss heaven. Let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread. Yet we are all supposed to be believers. And then there are others. Watch this. That this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, fill your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says there is a way. Everybody said there is a way. Now the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues. And it is important that you get to a point in your life. This is why you find out, have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries at different churches? Have you seen the commotion that happens there? During things like fasting and prayer or, or maybe Christmas or New Year or something. Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels, there are, there are many. They are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said, some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said, they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same? It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. He was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. 
So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they knew. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, how are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it and entered something else. There are others who read it and nothing happened. Lift your hands and say, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Please say it, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Jesus said it this way. I am the way, not any prophet, not any apostle, not any teacher, not any pastor. I am the way. You follow men, you will follow a lot of things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders multiplied people and all of that Jesus is being glorified in that ministry if I be lifted up I will draw all men to myself there is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life no matter how nice it sounds there is something you can hear no matter how ugly it sounds, it will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear 
that will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says, be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said, there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit according to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument, as powerful as they were, they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got A1 in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why you see brothers and sisters. It's part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast. Because I realize that when I stand on this stage it's a privileged position. Not everybody is daft spiritually. Pastors never forget this. When you stand there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking. This is the situation. The guy had been called a great man. Like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. It says, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day. There were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla, and they kept quiet. Worship team sang, and the guy wore suit, he came up and he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla heard, they said, Wow. This guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? 
The Bible says when they had, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha! Ah, amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache, God healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day, he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking, you see, the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses. Areas of excesses. Areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha. Maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody say your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. But could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth, but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom? And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone. Are you hearing me? That there are times that if need be, you may have to die for your convictions. If you open your heart to that dimension, then you can enjoy the blessings of God. Buy all the flashy cars, buy great houses, but they never take your place because you know that you are a born servant. Your Christian experience becomes more perfect. Are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness, rulers, spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective. You become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant christian 
it makes your Christian experience richer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it is for this cause, Ephesians chapter 4, please, verse 10. It is on account of this completion. Listen, please. That he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens. Verse 10, verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some. And some. And some. And some. Perspectives. He gave unto them. He engraced his body with gifts. Listen to me. Revealed perspectives to them. There are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs, but they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there. If you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up, there are people like that. There are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life? Just locate them. You are not going to hear any revelation. I traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference. And there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness, my goodness. These people, these people zeroed down the prophetic. It was almost prophecy but at will. I've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people. But I'm not called into the prophetic office. The grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you. So for me, I know that to prophesy, it must happen with fasting and prayer. It's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever... The prophetic gift must be activated in me is on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12. Why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says, Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says, these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints. Comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. To the end, that verse 13. Till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that. There's, there's anything wrong. 
I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe Dunamis TV, the people don't listen. Let me go on this, let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel, but you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who will never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadeh and his message. Say, please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access. There are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry. Because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago. And it was so much. You know, then... Now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> for me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. 
and it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I would not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries, they cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe, that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment. There are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benue. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing. And get blessed. Billy Graham. It was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was not, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And there were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's tape. Throw it away, and you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas, there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry. And he gave me the dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've touched many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality. See, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen, the way we were trained, huh? hear me. If I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you. 
and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. Yes. It doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinching or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive, they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues, are you getting me? Is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting if you are supposed to pray from so 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 time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting. Um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you where are we, you say Acts 16, they know you have not been you have not been following because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed and your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month that we, this memory you see is not just that, okay, the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it, but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house and then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was plain. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? Fonne. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And they said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlene Jack. As we are busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. 
that on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not, you go home, straight there, you are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call, you know how the Bible says it, rebuke one, then call another, you are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to, anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet, no matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this, no. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. <laughs> Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car eh? or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter typed. And the reason is that you have been a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from Brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God, but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God, mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy, very short guy, 
my goodness. Look, that guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But, another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me. And he said, there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And, and if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it very quickly. We are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to... You see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with IK, we traveled two years or so ago. While we are ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent because the word of God is about to come and I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter and say, when you are, free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet David danced. Yet it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. 
Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God. I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, I'd rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now, and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach and I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me, scared me in a way that I said, and then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you. But God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel, these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said, they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. 
people will come and sit down and they are sweating heat is killing them but the word of god is coming it's not because fans are not available it's not because they've stopped selling ac limitations there are many ministries who have people who are so rich but the devil is destroying their lives there are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samadeemi. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, 
why do ye also transgress what by god is asking you a question which will you choose to uphold to transgress the traditions of men you are in a place and the lord is asking you lay hands on this sick body and you say no kai i'm not i'm not used to it i'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church that's not what i'm saying but you are in your house they've never seen the laying on of hands and god is saying go ahead and do it if you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death someone will die and you transgress please let's go back you transgress the commandment of god so that you will keep your tradition next verse for god commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother let him die the death next verse but he say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me verse 6 and honor not his father and his mother he shall be free thus have ye made the commandment of god of none effect you can make the power of god the word of god the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to it's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual we love things happening normally let it be happening the way i have always known it and the moment i see another perspective then it is not of god it is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up it is not done this way it is not done this way i've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage putting a little place like this to honor the man of god and guests is carnal everybody's one before god and in those churches when the pastor comes he can sit anywhere once it's time for someone, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview. You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. You didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me. And you entered. The people were looking at you. And Young man, keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. This is what I believe. Because you were not taught the principles of excellence. You called it spirituality, but you've lost your job because of it. You were not taught diligence. That a Christian is also an agent of national transformation. And time to walk in the office, you are fasting and praying. And you are not doing anything. You left your job undone. When it was time to promote you, you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit. Physically, they demoted you. Because you are not adding to the advancement of the group. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there are people who just sit down. And feel I know all the principles. I know the principles of business expertise. I understand the psychology of communication. Until somebody fires an arrow from your village. And you wake up and one leg cannot move. And that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted. Then you know that there is more to life. Than psychology and philosophy. I'm telling you the truth. When Satan comes 
he finds the dimension you have ignored in God that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell there are anointed believers with no character because they've been taught it's all about the anointing once the anointing is in the building people must come so you can be sleeping around you are anointed and you know we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things and you come back and see the hand of God it convinces you that God is with you you do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you Samson said I will arise as before and all of a sudden he found out that is here he said you have been weighed O king in the balance God weighs men oh. he won't weigh you in one day he will keep weighing you you will be. that's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once four years ago this man was a great man everywhere but now the lampstand has been taken let me tell you God can take away the candlestick of men and give others read your Bible he took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person. May God not take your position and give another. Saul was still in the palace whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, meet, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems. I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us. And then I listened to an apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. And he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry. He said, never try to do to people what only God can do to them. Deliverance. That was it. I learned how to sleep soundly. Because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me I'm awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once. It was getting too much. Everybody would call at every time. I became a receptionist. Hundreds of phone calls, like every 30 minutes, someone is calling and the person can cry for 50. I was wearing out, literally. And then the Lord said, why don't you put something like that? Some of you are in that thing right now. You, have, you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble. And the people have turned their back and they are insulting you. Because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us. You are spiritual. But if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp.
I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels. There are dimensions in the spirit. I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are. You can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction. Divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet. A genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one on one session with us. And say by the grace of God. I will talk with you one on one. And. Let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait. Because we say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness, but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what oh no no psalm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 i'm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 we need divine direction in our lives you can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? All that. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came... That's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, 
we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship, but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married, but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life, but you need divine direction. And let me tell you something. It is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer. You will struggle. Nothing will work. When you are in the geography, when you are in your assigned place, everything is commanded to work for you there. Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure, which many times is limited. I need divine direction because if God does not direct me, I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of Koinonia. I can look out and say, wow, there's a crowd inside and outside. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking. And you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore when thy eye is single. Thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil. Your body is also full of darkness. 35. There is a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore. That the light which is in thee. Be not darkness. That means you can be making decisions. Based on a truth. You think you know whereas is wrong hallelujah for instance i will never marry a man who is rich who is not rich for instance i will never marry a broke man i don't want to suffer that's a light that you have you think it is light whereas when you allow god to help you you will see that is darkness what if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage. As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job. That gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas, if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, 
thou has well seen that means you can see wrongly he said for i will hasten my word that you have now seen that means your speed in life is also based on your perception you don't see wrongly you will not move fast in life but the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord very quickly what does it take to receive divine direction from god i really feel sad i'm just doing a lecture i'm, I'm so sorry our time is gone and i want us to pray number one requirements to be divinely directed by god number one you must admit that you are limited you must admit you must break your pride and admit that you are limited it is not listen it's not an insult look up please i want to teach you this about life please and please do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything are you hearing me do not even if you are a celebrity do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything every time i see our daddy come and sit down here i am very humbled by his humility brothers and sisters this is a professor the brightest and the finest in his field yet our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down and a small boy like me his son is just talking it's like i'm talking to my father and he's writing how many of us can have that humility are you hearing what i'm saying you must admit that you are limited no matter how prophetic you think you are no matter how apostolic you think you are many times when i cry before god i say lord help this small boy if you don't help me i will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid that's how i cry before god i'm not insulting myself i know it's the truth and i say lord send your word send me the word of the lord How many of us here can admit that i am great but i am limited if i depend on my strength alone i will mix intelligent and foolish decisions if you depend on your ability to choose a wife you will choose nonsense if you depend on your ability to choose a job you may choose rubbish it may look nice but that is the road of perdition if you choose where you want to stay by yourself you say i want to stay in lagos or abuja my tama or somewhere there somewhere peaceful i don't want some of you are already laughing but god is saying that's not my path for you you are saying i take authority over it you really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in zaria how about gentlemen I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be or not? Where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, Man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits? And members who just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet but you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth if you cannot wait for god to direct you i'll never forget i was rejoicing the year we we're about to prepare for koinonia to start i was so happy because i was saying lord my share my assignment now is over let me run and find something very useful and do let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere let me just enjoy my life and then god summoned a meeting at once and when i went i almost fainted the day god told me those who were around my reaction it was like how about god how about god and i've come to a point where i don't give god if god says stay in zaria forever i stay in zaria forever 
I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us. We will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. Say, I want a healing ministry. God says, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners, so God speaks in diverse manners, but in these last days he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men, how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit, either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt, they were forewarned. Genesis 41, don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says God came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10, they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. 
But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas and Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is that? Ananias in a dream, in a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul, he's in a house, he prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too. Elderly people, not just elders in church. Men who have had the advantage of age in their lives. But my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship. One great platform to receive spiritual direction. You can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life. Hallelujah. Wisdom to your life. I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking and I was sharing with him about something and while I was talking to me it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been matching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling, when I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them and wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that, and that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down, honestly. Things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me and said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening, there's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudok called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle John Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8, from verse 7 to 15, I want us to read that one. 
second kings chapter 8 guys don't project it until i ask us to do so so that our time is gone i mean this project this one now second kings 8 verse 7 to 15 is the an interesting story between prophet elisha the king of syria called ben haddad and one boy called hazael who later became king let me show you how that god can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic let's read it very quickly elisha came to ben, to damascus and ben haddad the king of syria was sick and it was told him saying the man of god is come hit her next verse and the king said unto hazael hazael was his boy like his servant take a present in thy hand see why it's good not to go and meet a man of god empty-handed and go meet the man of god and inquire of the lord so how do you inquire of the lord through the ministry of the prophets too are you seeing that inquire of the lord saying shall i recover from this disease i want to know so that i can put my house in order next verse please so hazael went hold on hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life hazael went to meet the man of god and took a present with him even of every good thing of damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said thy son ben haddad king of syria has sent me to thee saying shall i recover from this disease now watch this verse 10 and elisha said unto him go and say unto the man of god thou mayest certainly recover he said how be it let me tell you the truth i'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you the truth of the information is the king is going to die how be it the lord has shown me that he shall surely die next verse watch this i wish i had time i would have acted the drama and he settled his countenance after speaking to him the prophet just found his face and started crying and hazael said what is wrong the bible says he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of god wept why did he weep next verse and Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their stronghold shall thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and thou will dash their children, and reap up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry, a, I'm joking, no? you are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming, but I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25, down to the end, tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry. And in 24 hours, it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38, we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus saith the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, Oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sent the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he's saying now. Listen, 
God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change, sorry. But his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday and we never open ourselves to find out could it be that God is saying something else. We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying, it proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are bosom friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on his own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt, now watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rema. That the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11 from verse 27 to 30. That's the first time we see that prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet. Prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11. From verse 27, prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming and the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one, many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch, 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus and he signified by the spirit that there should be great death famine throughout the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, 
they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord, I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man? Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying, start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying, start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated and one time we got talking and I said look young man listen you do the job the job he was doing he was teaching in one school guess his salary 5,000 naira per month and if you don't come to teach the students they will still deduct something from it I told him remain there he's teaching you discipline he's teaching you submission God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. He said, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God say, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry. I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home where did it go to say it's still there oh, but i i found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it i said really wisdom from experience could it be that this is a revelation for someone you finish school you've done everything for one year you did not get a job people think you don't have faith god is teaching you the art of waiting it will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly, you are virtuous. 
Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying, I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God, he says, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. In just five minutes that we have left, listen, before we pray, I want you to examine in one minute all the wrong decisions that you have taken because you did not seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. God told you pray about it. You said it does not matter. If only you prayed, if only you took out time, you probably would not have started the ministry. Now you've started the ministry and it's killing you. If only you took out time to pray, you would have known that that friend is a deceitful person. He looked like an angel. When he came, he told you he was a man of God. Little did you know that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But God was telling you, pray. But you said, I'm in love. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I refuse to move without you. I refuse to take decisions in life without you. No matter how achievable they look. You can become successful without God. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It pays. It pays to be divinely directed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way of doing ministry that seems right. There is a way of doing business that seems right. There is a way of getting a job that seems right. There is a way of getting a husband and a wife that seems right. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way of trying to get the anointing. There is a way of trying to access revelation that seems right. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I don't trust myself outside of you. I need you to help me. Help me. Help me. End confusion from my life. End darkness from my life. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I'm tired of doing the wrong things. Go ahead and pray. I'm tired of circle after circle of mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. For as long as you learn the lesson. But when it becomes the theme of your life, you need divine direction. In one year, you have entered 10 relationships. They have all landed you in trouble. You need divine direction. You have entered 10 businesses. They've all landed you in trouble. You've started ministry everywhere. But you've ended up with scandal after scandal. Tonight is the time to flog it out with destiny. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I'm tired. Oh, I can't go anywhere without you. My destiny is at the mercy of your voice. My destiny is at the mercy of your word. Koinonia is at the mercy of your direction. Go ahead and pray. Just two prayer points tonight. Where is the place of my healing, oh God? Direct me. Where is the place of power? Where is the place where I will access life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point tonight is we're going to say, Lord, the direction I need to break the current limitation of my life to a new experience. Listen, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that the difference between where you are right now and the next level of your life is just one direction. A journey of 40 days can be turned into 40 years when you do not know the road. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? If only you were divinely directed, you would have gotten a job by now. You would have even been maritally settled. There are many people who are barren. If they can be directed to the right ministry, barrenness will bow at once. You are going to pray. You know the areas of your life where you are tired of confusion. Submit yourself tonight and lift your voice and say, let light come. Let light come. Lead me to the place of light, oh God. Are you praying tonight inside and outside? Some of you, your coming here tonight is the answer to the voice of God in your life where you will hear truths that will connect you to the next level of destiny. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Pray. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. lead me to the place where I can learn authentic ministry lead me to the place where I can find mentorship and building direct me show me light from scripture show me where I need to settle down I'm trusting you where is the next place of the assignment pray Reveal it to me. I don't want to be in a place you are not directing. Lift up your voice and pray. Direct me to my wife. Direct me to my husband. Direct me to the assigned job. Direct me to the circle of friends. Direct me to the messages. Direct me to the encounters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, between today and the miracle service on Friday, listen, pick any day of the week. It can be from tomorrow. Pick any day of the week and dedicate it to fast and pray. And the theme of that fasting is for divine direction in your life. Are you getting me? List all the things you know. Don't pretend like you have everything in order. You're going to say, Lord, this area, this area, this area, speak to me. I'm tired of silence from heaven. I want to provoke your voice. The messages you know by different men of God that have to talk about divine direction, get them. Sit under that anointing. Fast. Six to six, six to four. And settle down. Not the kind of fasting that you are answering every call and you are doing everything. Set to pick a convenient date and settle down. And I assure you, some of you, as you are praying, you will fall asleep. And in that sleep, you will see what you have never seen. And that's what will connect you to the next level. Some of you, as you are praying for the first time, you will see a vision. A real vision. Some of you will hear the audible voice of God. Some of you, nothing spectacular may happen but one direction from the word of God. And if you have graduated here and you are thinking of leaving, don't be in a hurry to leave. Settle down and give yourself one day and say, Lord, what is the blueprint for my life? The Bible says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Last prayer point. Reveal to me the next blueprint of my life, oh God. Go ahead and pray. Where am I going from here? Maritally, financially, ministerially, pray. I'm tired of confusion. 
I'm a final year student. In weeks I will be graduating. But oh Lord, open the heavens over me. I'm about to start ministry. I'm about to start a business. Open my eyes. I'm about to start a job. Give me direction. Yeah. As you engage in prayer this week I guarantee you that the voice of God will speak for you in my place of prayer this week I will be praying for you from the depths of my heart we need divine direction accurate direction for the next level of our lives accurate direction accurate direction for the next level of our lives accurate direction for the next level of our lives hallelujah now please before we round up listen to a very important announcement hallelujah the protocol department is still having a little issue sorting out the venue for our miracle service we really apologize for this. There is a program, CGC will be having a program on that Friday. Hallelujah. CGC is having a program on Friday. And that means that it may cost us a lot. Um, we may not be able to have the time, the whole time for the program. We can't say we'll wait till they finish. And so far, I think they have not been able to secure charity and faith hallelujah they've not been able to secure charity and faith at all for the program now listen if for any reason we do not have the opportunity to use these venues then next week miracle service will be our first night vigil hallelujah if we are unable listen please if we are unable to secure this then we will have our night vigil we will invite we'll make a quick arrangement bring in guest artists i may invite one or two men of god to join me and we'll have a very explosive session from maybe 10 o'clock down till morning hallelujah we we'll allow people to sell we we'll allow people to sell water or sell Zobo or those of you that can make moi moi or whatever so that those who are hungry and will come here you will invite your loved ones and there will not be time we will not have time constraints we will settle down and prove to the devil that Jesus is Lord hallelujah so listen if, if that is the case then most likely it is possible that we may still use this venue because I know um, CGC doesn't take all the time they are very very they'll start very fast so if they do finish just take note of our text messages please and please between today and tomorrow between today and tomorrow i'm um, called the protocol let me just know if we have concluded on that so that we'll announce it immediately All right, next Friday will be a night vigil. Hallelujah. Listen, believe me, you have not seen anything like it. It's not the vigil you will sleep. Hallelujah. I won't be doing this alone. It's going to be a powerful thing. We'll make the arrangement from after this meeting. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have Pastor I come from Kaduna, House on the Rock, and then we'll contact one or two people, and it will be an explosive time in the spirit. So, you invite everybody, your family members. Bring in your little snack. If you think you want to sleep, carry your bed from home and bring it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
and to that effect please prayer department you meet one hour before the time so that you can set the atmosphere school of ministry students next week saturday um we'll either fix the class in the afternoon or we'll just scrap it for that day and then we'll use the extra class that we fixed but there's there's lecture tomorrow 8 30 we're going to pray let's pray concerning the night with you hallelujah i'm sure that god wants to do a great thing don't you think so lift your voice in one minute and say lord we thank you it will be a time of visitation it will be a time of visitation a mighty time of visitation strange things will happen in this place you will move in power in the name of Jesus Christ all the vessels that you will be using you will come in might you will come in power there will be healings there will be miracles there will be manifestations of the Spirit of God I thank you because you are coming with great grace in the name of Jesus let it be a night of prophecy let it be a night of miracles let it be a night of restoration let it be a night where you will locate men in the name of jesus wipe the tears of families by the power that is in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah time is 10 p.m please come early uh, we'll do our best to provide i know that because it's a night vigil there'll be so many people and those who are coming from other places please and please we'll make arrangement with the union of road transport workers so that there will be buses and bikes kekena pep enough to be able to convey people and bring them hallelujah praise the lord and then in the morning hopefully when we're done we'll make arrangement with them so that there'll be buses as usual just the way we have it every week i truly believe it will be a powerful time so take the opportunity to fast pray invite don't be selfish drag your family members let them come and sleep here hallelujah if they want to sleep just tell them behave like you are under the anointing and then you can lie down and sleep those who are worshiping with us for the first time we apologize our time is gone i'd like you to please find your way and come out quickly inside and outside inside and outside you're welcome we want to welcome you god bless you god bless you go remain on your seat the lord brought you here to bless you Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos kate branda kata pakotos koto pre kate kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.